Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So good to have all of you here with us this morning. And I know that you're going to be blessed. You've already been blessed, I know, because God is here. And when God is here, you're going to be blessed. Amen? Amen. Yes. We just want to thank each and every one of you this morning. And if this is your first time coming, we thank you for coming. And let's give them a hand clap of welcome. Amen. 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 Well, I just want to speak a blessing over you before I turn it over to Pastor, so if you'll just receive, amen? Yes. God, I just plead the blood of Jesus Christ over each and every person this morning. Father, I thank you that you bless each and every person, Father God, in everything that they do, every endeavor, Father God, that you just bless it and that you anoint it, Father God. I speak blessings over their families, Father God, Father of the children. Of the, of the parents here this morning. I speak over their children and over their grandchildren in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, that you bless them coming in and bless them going out. Father, we thank you that the blood of Jesus Christ covers each family, Father, and that your plan and your purpose is being done and fulfilled in each and every one's life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. It is never looking time. Want to look at your neighbor, smile at your neighbor, point at your neighbor, and say, I came, I came. To, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word. This, day. this day. And I declare, I will never, never, ever, 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 never, ever be the same again. again. In, Jesus In Jesus' name, glory to God. <laughs> I hope I was right, but I. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus Christ of the rest of this service. Father, we thank you that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened upon the hope of your calling. We thank you for revelation knowledge this day. We thank you that the word of the Lord will have free course in our midst. We thank you for strong utterance and strong anointing this day. And that your people will make a strong drawing on the anointing of God this day. We thank you for answers coming in your presence today. Holy Spirit, I ask you to help me as I deliver the word today. Help me, Holy Spirit. Preach through me. Teach through me. Help me to say exactly what it should say the way I should say it. Illuminate the eyes of my understanding, Holy Spirit, as I'm teaching. Help me to flow with you exactly the way you want me to flow, Holy Spirit. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that signs and wonders follow your word. And we are preaching and teaching your word. So we're expecting and believing for signs and wonders to follow this word this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I ask if you will to get your Bibles and go to Philippians chapter 4. Yes. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And um, I'm going to start out in the message this morning. Um, I had an argument with the Lord about this because I had some, something else I was going to teach. And I've been studying it all week and I felt like I was supposed to teach that. And... Um, I said, this is just not going well. And I, I mean, I've been praying and praying and praying. I said, this, this, this just ain't working. And anytime it's not working, I realize this, the problem's not on God's end, it's on my end. It's on the receiving end. So I started, I said, okay, if there's something else, what is it? And it's definitely not what I was going to teach on before, but uh, I argued with the Lord. I said, we, I've taught this many times, and He assured me this is the message for today. So the message that we need today, all of us, is this message. Amen. Amen. Ways to keep your peace. We need. Amen. Amen. Now the message translation, Philippians 4 and 6, <clears throat> through to verse number 8, says, Don't fret or worry. Instead of worry and pray, let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns, before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. Amen. Amen. Now I said that like that on purpose. Because sometimes, as Patty was mentioning this morning, sometimes we just need to get settled down. Things will, will get us messed up. And we need to get settled down. And that's, that's what when we pray and give things to God, that's what happens. He settles us down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of our life. Yes. Now, I'm going to ask uh, in audio if they would get uh, Isaiah 53 and 3-5 through five and put it on the screen for me. Um, and I'll just mention some stuff while they're 
where they're going. Isaiah 53, 3 through 5. Now the Bible tells us Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Now if we've made Jesus Christ Lord of our life, mm -hmm. Jesus is on the inside of us. He lives in our heart. And His peace, since He's the Prince of Peace and He lives in us, His peace is just, it's all in us. Amen? Amen. Now in Isaiah, okay, it says, uh, he was looked down on and passed over a man who suffered, who knew pain firsthand. One look at him and people turned away. We looked down on him and thought, and thought he was scum. Keep, keep going, if you will. But the fact is, it was our pains he carried, our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us. We thought he brought it on himself. That was God punishing him for, it, for his own failures. That's what we thought. Keep going. But it was our sins that did that to him, that ripped and tore and crushed him, our sins. He took that punishment that made us whole. Now, the chastisement of our peace, this scripture in another translation says, in verse number 5, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The chastisement of our peace. In other words, he took a beating so that we would have peace. Yeah. We'd be whole, nothing missing, nothing broken in every area of our life. But he took that beating so we'd be have full of peace. Amen. Full of peace. Amen. So if he took that beating for peace, then I know I've got peace. The Prince of Peace lives on the inside of me. Now I've got an adversary, and you've got an adversary who's always trying to steal our peace. Yeah, right. He's coming with yeah. thoughts and words and actions of others and, yeah. and our own actions and our own words and trying to steal our peace. Amen? Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Sometimes we hear something or something happens and we're aware the peace is gone. Y'all ever done that? Yeah. You've got the peace. I mean, you're just having a great day and the peace is missing. What happened? Yeah. What happened? What happened? We picked up something. Yeah. Amen. Did Jesus leave us? No. He's the Prince of Peace. He's on the inside of us. We have him in our heart. He's there. But what, what, what's going on? We've replaced something else at the center. We, we started worrying about something. We picked up some fear. We picked up some worry. We picked up some unbelief. We picked up some problem that we maybe gave to him and took it back. Yeah. Or we pick up a problem that we hadn't gave to him. Yeah. And that has, has stolen our peace. And we've allowed that to become the center of our focus. It's taken over our hearts and minds. This situation, this problem, this person... It's number one, and now he's not. And we've lost that peace. That peace is that awareness of his presence. Uh -huh. yes. Romans 8 and 6 says, The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. When we lose peace, it should be a trigger for us. What did I just pick up? Did I pick up a worry thought? Did I pick up a fear thought? Did I hear something that grieved the Spirit? Did I say something that grieved the Spirit? I need to let go of whatever it is quickly by prayer and giving it to God. Amen. Pauline has a statement that she says a lot. I like the statement. If you don't pick it up, you won't have to carry it. Yes. Amen. Well, a lot of times we pick up stuff, we're carrying stuff because yes. we picked it up. Yes. We, we're not giving it to God the way we should. And really the trigger, I mean the second we lose that peace, we should immediately say, oh, whoa, whoa, I got to find out what it is, what it is, what I pick up, what it is, and now I've got to pray about it. Lord, I give it to you. I, I didn't mean to take it. I can't take it. I can't handle it. God, I give this to you. Yeah. And see if we'll do that. If we'll do it instantly, if we'll train ourselves to do it instantly, the peace will return instantly. Yeah. But sometimes we carry the thing for two days or three days yeah. or three weeks or three months or three years <laughs> or 30 years. Uh -huh. We'll carry it. Yes. I know, that's none of y'all. It's, it's your neighbor. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you this morning. You, this morning. you unbelieving, full of doubt thing you. <laughs> Y'all know you wanted to say that to your neighbor anyway. <laughs> Philippians 6 and 7 in the complete Jewish Bible says, don't worry about anything. On the contrary, make your request known to God by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Then God, this is the Jewish Bible, then God shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. Passing all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds safe in union with the Messiah, Yeshua. Now wait a minute. The union of peace. In other words, I'm walking around with peace. God's already took the chastisement. He already bore that for me that I have the peace. Now if I'm not walking in the peace, it's not His fault, it's my fault. What, what am I doing? What, what am I allowing to steal that peace? i got to get this thing taken care of so I can get back in that peace. That peace will guard and protect my heart and mind. That peace will guard and protect my body. 
Attacks, some attacks come against our bodies because we lose the peace. Amen. Thank you. That was good preaching. Y'all are yeah. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Things that try to steal our peace, that try to steal our peace. Certain people. Look at your neighbor and say, you know. You know. <laughs> Feelings attack us and they try their best to, to steal our peace. And we speak the word, but sometimes the feelings of anxiety persist. Amen. But he took the chastisement of, of our peace. <clears throat> Philippians 6 and 7, contemporary English. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer your prayers and requests to God. Then because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no, no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. The way you think and feel. Isaiah 55 and 12 says you'll go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Me and Pastor Sharon were running errands the other day. And um, it was just a good day. Um, it was after prayer one of the days. And uh, we had prayer on Tuesdays and Fridays. And it was just after one of those days. And we goof off and just had, you know, spend a lot of time together. And we were um, going along. And, and suddenly, I just felt peace lift. Now, I've felt this before. Now, I'm a pastor, but I'm also an intercessor. And there is a difference. Because sometimes, you know, some, the Lord will put some things on me to intercede about. And I felt that peace lift. And in this instance, not in all instances, not in most instances, but it was heavy. And it was very heavy. And I said, now, what's up? And, and, am I allowing this or what's up? And it was, I believe the Lord was wanting me to pray for somebody very strongly at that moment. And I couldn't put it off. I could have, but it wouldn't have. I, I wouldn't have had no peace about it if I'd have had it done. You understand what I'm saying? You've all been there. You've all done this same thing. Amen. And uh, so I just started praying in the spirit. And we're driving down the road, and um, we had some errands. And I asked her. I said, "Would you do the errand? I need to stay in the car for a few minutes." So I stayed in the car for about 15 or 20 minutes. Actually, I stayed until she got back. And then I was still praying in the spirit when she got back in the car. And we prayed just a little bit uh, after we left. And then I felt it lift. And whatever it was. Okay, I, re I regained the peace, but there was something that affected someone, whether it's in the congregation or, or in our family. There was something yes. somewhere that affected us in some way yes. that was there was an attack against that peace, and the Spirit knew it, and the Spirit needed somebody to intercede right then. Yes. See, a lot of times what we don't do is we don't do it right then. We say, I'm busy right now, Father God, and, I, and we, we've all been guilty of this. I'm definitely guilty of this. But he, he's saying, no, I, I'm not. You know, the Holy Spirit saying, I, I need somebody now. i got to have it now. This is right this second. This is very important. Do it now. Everything, everything else you think is so important right this second can be laid to the side. Just, the, you know, a lot of times with ladies, it's the housework. The housework is the most important thing. Ladies, your laundry. You know, everything in the world. I know that was, that was not politically correct. I said ladies in the laundry. I know men can do laundry. I, I understand that. I tell you, I'm not going to be a politically correct pastor. I just don't care. I just don't care. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think that stuff's got a place. I'm sorry. Thank Amen. you very much. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I mean it. Thank you. Glory to God. But sometimes we just, we let things steal our peace. Little things happen. Little things are said. Little things are done. And before we know it, we're totally out of peace. And, you know, they're, they're coming from the enemy. God didn't bring these things. God gave us peace. But, but the enemy trying to steal that peace all day from us. Why is he trying to do it? Because we get in peace. There's a rhythm in that peace. I mean, I mean, there's a flow there. And before you know it, we're praying for everybody. And we're, 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 we're speaking good words over everybody. We're encouraging everybody. There's a flow and there's a harmony. And I'm telling you, there's great power released when there's a flow and there's a harmony in our life like that. And the enemy wants to keep us goofed up. That's right. And that's all of us. Yeah. And we start carrying this stuff, and the Lord doesn't want us to carry it. Okay, Amen. Psalms 55 and 22. I'm going to read it in several different translations. This is the Amplified. Cast your burden on the Lord, release it, and He'll sustain you and uphold you. Release it. See, my problem, I don't know if y'all have this problem, but my problem is I have sticky fingers when it comes to releasing it. It's like, 
the, the, the sticky sticky notes, yeah. it's still there. Okay, God, it's all yours. But it's still there. It's still stuck to me. I'm still thinking about it in my thought life. I'm still talking about it to other people. I'm still bringing it up three weeks after it happened. It's still there. I got to release it. I got to let it go. In the, the same scripture, in the, in the King James says, uh, Psalms 55 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He won't suffer the righteous to be moved. In God's Word translation, turn your burdens over to the Lord and he'll take care of you. He'll never let the righteous person stumble. In the Good News translation, it says, leave your troubles with the Lord and he'll defend you. Sometimes it's about defending us, it's about wrong words that have been spoken to us or about us. And it's, it's about, well, you know, I can't believe they said that. <laughs> Leave it, let it go. Don't argue about it, let it go. What causes a nervous breakdown? Trying to carry things we can't carry. Amen. Amen. Have you ever been messed up? Or am I preaching to a, a congregation of perfect people here? Now, if I'm preaching to perfect people, I need you up here right now. Because I need you to take over from me. Because I tell you, I, I have been messed up before. I've been so far down, I couldn't see straight. I couldn't see up. I couldn't, I mean, dear God in heaven, I needed help. Amen. And I'm telling you, when you carry things like that, it just gets on you too far, and you've got to let it go. Amen. And every one of us is different. We all look at each other like they're, we're strange. Yeah. I can't believe losing sleep messes them up like that. But somebody can say one little off word to you and you explode. Yeah. Or, or maybe your dinner didn't come at home at the right time. You know, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. It could be a bill. It could be a certain type of music that sets you off. A thousand things. It could be traffic. It could be any, any little thing. But we let it get our peace. Yes. Amen. We go through, when we carry stuff like that, mental torment. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Amen. I have. Both hands are up. I have. Yeah. More Amen. than I want to say, as Patty said this morning, I mean that. Amen. And um, I don't like it. That's right. I don't like it. But it comes from carrying things we shouldn't be carrying. Yes. Some people carry grief. A loved one will die. And they'll carry that grief for a long, long time. I understand there's a natural period of grief. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not making light of it. When you lose a loved one, that's not what I'm doing. But, but if it's 10 years later and you're still carrying it like it's the first day, I'm telling you, you're in a spirit of grief and you're carrying something that you can't possibly carry. Amen. And you can't go forward. It's going to break your body down. It's going, to break, it's going to break you down. You cannot do it. You've got to let it go. And I say, it is, I say, let it go. It's so easy to say that. And I don't mean to be trite when I say that. But you've got to figure out how to give it to God. Amen. You've got to figure it out. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. It's got to be you and God. And you just got to figure out, okay, God, you've got to take this. I can't take it. Yes. And you know what? He'll take it. Yes. Amen. Some people carry unforgiveness for years. Yeah. I'm not talking about days. I'm not talking about weeks. I'm talking about years. You don't think that stuff will mess you up? It'll mess you up. Matthew 11. Thank y'all for drawing the way you are. Matthew 11, in the verse 28 through 30 in the message, says, Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me. You'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me and watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Wow, I like that scripture so much. I want to learn the unforced rhythms of grace so much. I need them more. I think we all need them more. I won't let anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Wow. See, the enemy, in order to steal the peace, that the Prince of Peace is on the inside of us and he's given us peace and it's just flowing through us. It's keeping our heart and mind. But he'll orchestrate people across our paths to say or do something to steal our peace. Yeah. 
we have to quickly get over in prayer or, or we'll mess up. Lord, I can't handle this. I can't do it. Help me. Help me. It's pressing me. The enemy uses pressure to get us to lose our peace. Thoughts steal our peace. Doubt, fear, unbelief, worry. Worry about the outcome of something. Worrying about tomorrow. Worrying about 10 years from now. Worrying about the past. Give it to God. My dad, um, he had a thought, one thought that tormented him when I was a teenager. Um, probably from the time I was 17 or 18. Something like that. It was a long time. He had it for years. And it sold his peace and really carried it with him for the rest of his life. It ruined the rest of his life and that thought was a lie. It was a lie that the enemy had told him and it was a total lie. But he, he couldn't get that out of his head. My question to you and myself, what lie is still in your peace today? Amen. What lie is ruining your life today? Maybe it's the lies we believe about ourselves. Yes. By thinking about them, the enemy steals our peace. 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 You're led by peace. So if I don't have peace, I don't go. Amen. But the family's going. I gotta go. If you don't have peace, you better not go. I don't care where the family's going. I don't care where your friends are going. I'm telling you, if you don't have peace, there's a reason you don't have peace. Why, why did you lose that awareness? Why, why did that peace leave? Why did it live? Jesus didn't leave you. What happened? Why is he, he, he the peace is suddenly not there? Because something is saying, uh-uh, you got to pray this thing through because you don't know if this is the right time. See, I'm telling you, we get in the ahead or behind and mess ourselves up. Amen. Be led forth with peace. If you get ahead, you'll lose your peace. You're too far behind, you'll lose your peace. I personally would rather be behind because I can catch up. Sometimes you get a front. Now, you might not know what I'm talking about. Okay? You get a, you get a car out of time. You need a car, but you get it out of time. You, you, you buy it, and, and the Lord's not telling you to do it at this time, even though you have the need, because sometimes he'll, he'll, he'll say, not man. I'm, I think the wall, God. This is bad. I think how to push this thing everywhere I go, and, and you're not giving me a release to get it. You don't give me the peace to get it. Why not? Well, I can get it. I'll get it. They, they said they would make my payments. I got it. That would be the hardest car you ever pay for in your entire life. Because you didn't have peace about it. And see, God knew the future. He knew what was coming up. And he's saying, uh-uh, not now, not now. He's not saying it's a bad thing. He's saying, I'll give it to you later. I have a better time and I have something better to release to you. But you've got to trust me in this. You've got to give it to me. We have a problem with that. Y'all pray for pastor. Pastor has a problem with that. Sometimes. I'm getting better. Some things produce peace in us when we do certain things or hear certain things. Um, Y'all will think it's funny, but there's a, a guy, he died many years ago, we found out a couple of years ago. His name is Bob Ross. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of him. He's an artist. And he, uh, he paints, he's got all kinds of stuff on YouTube and now it's on Netflix. He had years, maybe 30 years of uh, paintings where he did a painting in 30 minutes. And he did this wonderful, beautiful scene. And Bob Ross is talking. And now to me, you know, he's a, he was a brilliant painter. And it produces such peace to me just to watch him. But to hear him and watch him, it's amazing. I mean, Bob Ross is talking, oh, this is your world. Let's add a little tree in your world. And if something happens, you know, and, and the brush stroke's not right, he said, oh, we can fix that because this is your world. We can change that. And Bob Ross is just talking, and it's just so soothing, and it's just so... And I'm like, I cut on Bob Ross at the house sometimes. Just to, I've seen the, the, you know, a lot of the things that he's done, and I'm like, i got to hear this guy. I mean, it's just so peaceful, and I love to watch because it creates peace in me. Now, this may not create peace in you, and I'm not saying everybody's cooking cookie cutter mold and everybody has to <laughs> like the same things. That's not what I'm saying. But in me, it produces peace watching him, you know, do the, the seashore, do the mountains and, and do the pictures with the trees and stuff and the snow. It, it produces great peace in me. Uh -huh. Amen. Different things produce peace in different people. Certain types of music produce peace in you, but it might not produce peace in me. Mm -hmm. But we have to respect our differences. Thank you. 
Sometimes people can say words, wrong words, and those words hurt you deeply. And maybe no one else would understand. Maybe even the person saying the words doesn't understand how damaging their words are being to you. Those words, wrong words, steal your peace. And they were designed to steal your peace, to hurt you, and destroy you. Now let me give you a, a scripture. You might be in the church, and wrong words have hurt you. Yes. Hang on. I'm your pastor. Maybe I said wrong words to you, and I've hurt you. I apologize if I did. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I'm a fleshly human person, just like everybody else. And, yes. and I make mistakes, and I say the wrong words, and I, I truly ask for you to forgive me, and to not view me from that, if I've done that, and I've offended you and hurt you. I mean that from my heart. Amen. And I'll do the same for you. Yes. Yes. And sometimes everybody knows how things should be done. Uh, I could really, I could do, I won't. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah 54 and 17, and the Amplified says, But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. See, sometimes wrong words or weapons formed against us. And it steals our peace. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall show to be in the wrong. This peace, righteousness, security, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Those in whom the ideal servant of the Lord is reproduced. Their righteousness or vindication which they obtain from me was which I impart to them as their justification. So wrong words can be weapons. Easy to read. People will make weapons to fight against you, but their weapons will not defeat you. Some people will say things. This is the easy to read. Some people will say things against you. But anyone who speaks against you will be proved wrong. Yes. The Lord says, that's what my servant gets. Amen. He gets the good things that comes from me, said the Lord. Amen. Wrong words spoken by friends, relatives, or co-workers. Wrong words we've spoken to others work against each other as weapons to get us to quit, to, get, to ruin our day, to oppress us or depress us by thinking about those words over and over. We allow the enemy to come in and gives him a place. And it causes us to lose our peace and bog us down. The enemy speaks lies into our lives, over our lives. And has people come across our paths just to confirm those lies. Give it to God. Give the whole situation to God. I remember one time there was some words spoken and it really got me. Now I'm going to ask for hands this morning. How many have ever had words spoken to you and it got you? I'm not talking about it got you on the surface. I'm talking about it got you in the core. Yeah. I mean, it it rattled you. Yeah. I mean, your inner most being. Yes. And I remember saying to the Lord, I said, I I can't I can't take this. I don't know. You know, and I know you're not supposed to do that, and that's not a good confession. I, I get that. But I said, I I don't I can't handle this. And I said, Lord, I, you're going to have to take this. And I mean, it was just, it just put me there. And a few minutes later, I had finished praying. And uh, I went to think about it. Because you know you think about it. You think about wrong things that have been said to you or done to you. You think about those over and over. Our minds gravitate to those things. that will track on our minds when, when it happens like that. And I couldn't remember. I said, that's odd. Because I remembered them for days. can't remember them now. A few days went on. I'm still trying to think about it. I'm still trying to remember it. I can't remember it. Wait a minute. I gave it to God. Now this is the first time. This is only the only time ever it's ever happened. Now all this time later, I, I still to this day, I can't remember those words. I can't remember them. The Holy Ghost has got some sort of... And He took them out. I'm like, how'd you do that? Wow, I like that. I mean... I got some more I want you to take out. Here we go. Here we go. Take these out. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. I've never, I mean, that's that's gotta be a work of the spirit because I mean, yes. you know, we can remember, you can remember when your first grade teacher said something bad about you a lot of times. <laughs> but you can't remember something, you know, that that really got you to the core. That's God. Yes. So when we give it to him, yes. and that was a supernatural demonstration of, of what he did, but I'm telling you. That's the way it's supposed to be. He's supposed to have it, and we're not supposed to have it. Amen. We're not supposed to think about it or talk about it. It's supposed to be gone. I'm going to ask you to stand. i got a lot more. Amen. I asked Pastor Sherry if she'd come.
I'm going to read you a scripture while she's coming. Philippians 4 and 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, if the Lord was speaking to you this morning, I want you to just right now, right where you're at, to just yield yourself to the Lord and uh, cast this care or this concern on Him. And He says to cast it on Him once and for all. Because as Pastor taught, so many times we'll give it to Him and then we'll take it right back. And the thing is about that uh, is that a lot of times we have to do it by faith. That's right. We give it to God. And then the darts and the thoughts start coming to our, back to our minds. And instead of going down that road, uh, uh, talking about it, dwelling on it, you know, keeping it uh, fresh in our minds, we have to start find a scripture. Find yeah. something of the Word of God that you can replace that thought with, yes. that yes. fear yes. with, yes. Yes. and you meditate on that, That's and right. you speak that right. over and over and over until that scripture becomes more a part of you yes. than that lie was, or that care, That's or right. whatever it is that the enemy has come against That's you right. with. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? So I want to just speak over you this morning. You just reach out to the Lord, and... Uh, just uh, give yield to him this morning. Just Amen. yield to him. Father God, we just come before you this morning, Father God. We give you all the worries and all the cares, Father God. The situations, Father God, that we can't change in our own flesh or do anything about, Father yes. God. Yes. Whether it be a financial situation or a family situation or a job situation or whatever it might be this morning, Father. We can't carry it. We can't do it. We can't change it within our own flesh. So, Father, we are just going to cast this over on you, Father God. You see every need. You see every care that we have, Father God. And you care for us, Father. You care for us more than we can ever even imagine. And, Father, what concerns us you is concerning to you, Father God. And we just cast it over to you today, Father God. And we give you thanks and praise, Father God, and, and honor. That you are the King of kings and yes. the Lord of lords. Yes. That you are bigger than this mountain. You are bigger than this situation. You are yes. bigger than this problem, yes. Father God. Yes. And Father, I just ask you, Father, to move and minister in this yes. situation. Father, I just speak wisdom of your people this morning. Yes. Father, give them the wisdom, Father God, to, to, to make the right decisions or do the right things, yes. Father God. That, that you go before them, Father God, and that you make the, the way plain. Yes. In Jesus' name, yes. Father. And we just bind every yes. wrong thought. And we bind every care in the name of Jesus. And we bind every burden in Jesus' name. And we bind every assignment and every attack of the enemy. Yes. And we lose the peace of God. Yes. yes. Fill the people, your yes. people's hearts and their yes. minds this morning. In the name of Jesus, and we give you all praise for it. And Father, when those thought, those thoughts, those fiery darts try to come back to our minds, we bind them in the name of Jesus, yes. and we loose the Word of God, yes. and we speak the Word of God, and we yes. meditate on the Word of God, and we yes. dwell on the Word of God. Give you all praise this morning, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Love. Yes. Amen. And He is so good. Yes. So good to us that He cares about everything that we care about. Everything that yes. concerns us. Yes. Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. And I know Ashley's probably going to mention it. There's two things I know is Brother Vickers coming in about two weeks, and uh, we'll have dinner on the grounds that, that day, and they've got a list for you out there. And uh, also, um, Calvin Jennings is in room 610, unless he got out this morning. He's in room 610 at the medical center. He's doing better. He's had the surgery. But, uh, you know, if y'all call him or go by and see him, I'm sure it will bless him. Mm -hmm.